Hello there, and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash, and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development, and personal grooming. Now, being a well-dressed man is not that complicated. It is a bit like following a recipe for a cake. A few little ingredients here and there, and you end up with something which is fine and wonderful to eat. And for us, intentionally well-dressed men, those ingredients are normally the underlying foundation pieces which make up the way we dress. It's the suit or the jacket or blazer that you wear. It's the shirt, the tie, and those little accessories which just accentuate the main items that you're wearing. For most of us, you know, being conservative is what it's all about being well-dressed. It's not about being the most obvious and garish person in the room. It's about wearing those simple pieces, but really delivering in the way that they look with style and confidence to a degree. Now, to some people, this simple recipe is beyond them, and they try and stuff too many things into their cake, and it ends up unpalatable. So today, we're going to talk about the things which I think go beyond the pale, that ruin the recipe for the intentionally well-dressed man. So let's have a look. Now, whilst there are many items which I think some men wear, which just make it look like they're trying too hard to be stylish or cool or keep up with the trends, there's one thing which really grinds my gears, and that is the tie bar. Now, I should say, first of all, I'm a big fan of ties, and I take every opportunity to wear a tie that I possibly can, because I think it injects a lot of colour, a lot of texture, and a lot of personality into anybody's clothing. And I've worn a tie since I was 11, and I went up to my secondary schooling, and, you know, we had a school tie. I've worn one ever since. But I see no point to the tie bar. I think this is a trinket which often devalues the look of a tie and to be honest it serves no practical purpose in the world today. You know I always take the the tail of my tie, the rearmost part of my tie, poke it through the little keeper loop in the in the front, the back of the front of the tie, perfect. The tie really strays out of its required drape down the front of my shirt. So I really don't see the point in a tie bar. It's a little bit of bling and it just makes a gentleman look like he's trying too hard to get your attention and put a bit of, you know, garish jewellery into his clothing. Because remember, this is the visual part. This is what you see, the V of the, the sort of tie where your collar is. Don't do anything which will make you look unnecessarily cluttered. Now, another thing which I see many men increasingly start to wear, which for me screams out excessive extrovertism, and that's monograms. You see people with monograms on the collar of their shirt, on the cuff barrel of their shirt, or even on the breast of their shirt. And I often think to myself, you know, this is somebody who's saying to us, look, I've got a made-to-measure shirt or a bespoke shirt, and I want you to know it. And I think most of us intentionally well-dressed men, even if you were wearing the finest bespoke shirt, the last thing you want to do is, you know, telegraph that to everybody around you. A very good way of thinking about being well-dressed is conservatism. It's all about looking your best, but without shouting out to other people that you're trying to do so. That's really the fundamental principle of being a well-dressed person. So monograms, I think, steps beyond the pale. And it simply looks like, you know, you're shouting out to the world, look, I've spent a lot of money on this shirt, I've had it monogrammed, and I want you to know about it. Uh, now, I understand monogramming if you are, you know, if you're in boarding school and you're submitting your shirt to a group laundry sort of service, and the monogramming allows you to identify your shirt. But let's be honest, that's not the case. People wear monograms on their garments because they want you to see that they've got a monogram, not for any practical application. So please, if you're going to have a nice new shirt made for yourself, skip the monogram, gents. Now, another area where I see men applying excessive accessories to their clothing is when you see people wearing cufflinks, but with ordinary barrel cuff shirts. So cufflinks are 
typically designed to be worn with a French cuff or a double cuff, whatever you want to call it, uh, and they work very well. It's a lovely accessory. I own many, many um, French cuff shirts and I enjoy wearing cufflinks. It's an opportunity to express a little bit of your personality and you can have cufflinks made in all different substances and in different shapes and sizes. It's a really great way of you know displaying your character but with a barrel cuff shirt there is absolutely no need. Now for me personally I really like barrel cuff shirts. They're practical everyday shirts. I'm wearing one right now. You know, I don't often wear French cuff shirts unless it's a special occasion. So to force a, a cufflink into service with a barrel cuff shirt to me suggests somebody who's a little bit loose in the way that they dress. They perhaps don't fully understand uh, what a cufflink is all about and they're just using that opportunity to push another little bit of bling another bit of sparkle, an accessory onto their clothing. And quite often they've got far too much going on already with their outfit. So please do not press your cufflinks into service with a barrel cuff shirt. It's not meant to be there and it just doesn't look right. Okay, so my next sign that men are trying too hard when it comes to dressing well is these folks you see who wear zany coloured socks. So I like, you know, I enjoy wearing nice socks, the same as anybody else, but these garishly coloured socks, the bright reds, the bright electric blue socks, which people will often wear as if they are just screaming out, look at me, look at me, I've got an interesting personality. And you'll see these gentlemen who sit down and they'll pull their trouser leg up so you can see these ridiculous patterned socks or coloured socks. And I think personally that it detracts from the overall look. Now, a true conservative, intentionally well-dressed man will wear an above the calf, dark coloured sock or a sock which is proportionate in colour to the clothing that he's wearing. Now most people will suggest that you should wear a sock which fits in with the colour of the shoe that you're wearing. So you've got a graduated um, colour line when if for instance your trouser leg should ride up it's not going to look ridiculous. Now as I say many of the folks you see wearing these zany socks are doing so to draw attention to themselves and to me to be honest it just looks a little bit sad that they are you know going to that sort of length to try and show people that they've got an interesting personality. Your personality emanates from within not around the socks that you're wearing. So please wear socks which are appropriate for the clothing that you're wearing and proportionate to the situation that you're going into. You know, would you really be, uh, you know, negotiating a business deal with a pair of, um, you know, electric pink socks on? Probably not. And if you did, you're not going to be taken seriously. Now, another trait that I hate to see men doing is wearing a tie which matches exactly the colour, the pattern or the material of the shirt that they're wearing. Because, you know, I think you wear a tie because it's an opportunity to add a bit of colour, add a bit of pattern and express a little bit about you in the clothing that you wear. This is, the tie is one of the few things that you can do that with, along with the pocket square. So if you choose to wear a tie, which is utterly camouflaged by the fact that it's the same colour as the shirt you're wearing, you lose that opportunity to show the world a bit about you. Now I know why men do it, you know, it's trendy, it's fashionable, you see these gangsters and movie stars wearing uh, ties which match their shirts. You can barely see the fact that they're wearing a tie. So what's the point? I would say wear a tie which shows a bit about you. Don't hide it, suppress it by the shirt that you're wearing. Wear it loud and proud and wear a tie which, you know, tells the world about you. Now one of the areas that I see men trying too hard and letting themselves down when it comes to dressing well is the wearing of excessive jewellery. Now I'm a bit unusual, I don't wear any jewellery at all. Um, I don't wear a wedding ring despite being married for many years simply because I don't like it. But when you see a man who's just utterly bejazzled with jewellery 
it kind of lets down their overall look for me. You know, you see a gentleman with a couple of rings on one hand, rings on the other hand, a bracelet, a wristwatch, uh, perhaps a pocket square chain hanging out of their um, lapel buttonhole. And it all looks a bit like it's just somebody saying, look at me, I've got lots of jewellery, I'm important, I'm well-dressed. And actually, it doesn't come across like that. We're all familiar with the fact that, you know, less is more uh, when it comes to men's style, and absolutely that's the case with jewellery. Now me, I wear a wristwatch. That's the closest thing to a bit of jewellery which I wear. And in fact, I put a lot of you know, thought into my wristwatches. I enjoy Swiss wristwatches, as you'll be aware, if you watch my channel. So for me, that's it. Um, but please, you know, leave all those extra bits of jewellery at home. If you're going out and you're going to a meeting, you want to look your very best. Keep it clean, keep it smart, keep it minimalist when it comes to superfluous jewellery. Otherwise, you start to look a bit like a Christmas tree with lots of things catching the light everywhere and it looks like you're trying to sell second-hand cars. So watch out for that allure of the bright and sparkly things. Leave them at home. Remember, the goal of the well-dressed man is to be well-dressed in the eyes of others, yet without them being able to put their finger on it, why it is that you are so sartorially well put together. It is just the classic flow of the clothes that you're wearing. And, and often it's just being quite conservative in the things that you wear. Just a few simple, well-made, um, high quality pieces quite often is all that you need to look your very best. All of these little superfluous baubles that we've talked about today are really unnecessary and they draw attention to the way you look in the wrong way. Now talking about the recipe as we are today, you know, the recipe to make a great cake is normally quite simple. If you put too much sugar in there though, it'll be too sweet. If you put too much butter, it'll be too greasy. You have to get those things in the right proportions. Those ingredients are simple, but if you overdo any one of them, it's not going to work out well. The same thing goes for the way that you dress. Keep it simple is often the best way to go. So, I hope you've enjoyed this discussion today about spotting when you're trying too hard to look your very best. The answer normally is to step back and take something off, not put something on. So if you have enjoyed this video today, do us a favour, give us a thumbs up. And if you're not already a member, click that red button and join us here at the Chaps Guide channel by subscribing. I look forward to seeing you again very soon in the next video. Until then, take care and look after yourselves.